Hi, welcome to this latest edition of Lightboard Lessons, and today we're going to talk about Let's Encrypt and what that means for Big IP. First of all, Let's Encrypt is a certificate authority for free, and you know their man their mantra is it's free, it's automated, and it's open. And so, uh, you know, I'll have some resources in the article for this video as far as you know what what all that means. But uh, suffice it to say, it's it, it's a new certificate authority that was uh, released to prod in April, and they already have five million certs that have been signed by the authority. So, you know, it's up to you to decide whether or not, you know, to trust Let's Encrypt versus your VeriSign and DigiCert and, you know, all the other certificate authorities, but they are trusted in all of the major browsers. So, you know, it's not, a, it's not an issue with, with uh, trust, but it might be an issue with your trust. So. Uh, you know, we're agnostic. We will support any trusted certificates, or even if you want to do self-signed certs and install them on the Big IP, uh, you could do it that way. But I wanted to go over kind of the the Let's Encrypt solution and and what that means for Big IP and, and how to automate that solution on Big IP. And so, Let's Encrypt uses the Acme protocol, and I'll just to uh, communicate with the Let's Encrypt servers. And there's um, a guy out on GitHub named Lucas, and he's got a script called Let's Encrypt.sh, and it does all the heavy lifting with the communication to uh, to Let's Encrypt. And so you can utilize this script, and I've built a Python uh, hook script that interacts with that uh, that Let's Encrypt uh, shell script uh, to to actually do all the work. But basically, what happens is you have a Let's Encrypt client, and in this case, it's this Let's Encrypt.sh. And what it will do is it will sign your domain. So if you have, um, for sake of this, I have an actual test domain that I use, ramanempire.net. And then I'll also have the alias for that, um, or the C name for that, www. And so I put those domains in a domains.txt file that this reads from. And what it'll do is it will uh, it'll, uh, sign those domains, and then it'll, it will generate a, a, a certificate uh, sign request, and then it will send that over to the Let's Encrypt servers. And then the Let's Encrypt servers will then generate a challenge to the client, and this challenge can be done with DNS or it can be done with HTTP. Now the HTTP version, what, what it'll do, it'll, it'll issue you a challenge and then you create a file on your web server that it can then go find with whatever challenge string it gave you. In this case, we're gonna do a DNS example because that's what I built with uh, my uh, Python hook script. And so when I get this challenge, what I'll do here is then kind of out of band of this relationship, I will reach out to my name servers um, and, and I will add a text record, you know, say, you know, call this, you know, Acme Challenge. And I'll add a text record in that domain for whatever string they gave me. And then, uh, and then because I'm using the alias as well, it'll be that string dot dub 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 text record and string. And so it does each of these challenges one at a time. But from the script, in my case, I have a, a, name a name services provider that has an API. So I write these files uh, based upon the feedback I got from the Let's Encrypt servers. It will send those, uh, those challenge strings via the API to create these text records. As soon as they're created and I validated from the client that they've deployed to all my name servers, then I will let Let's Encrypt know that it can validate those. So, you know, that's another step over here and saying, hey, um, you know, I have deployed my challenge. Um, so, deployed the challenge. And then it will come and validate that. So, on its end, it will come check against my name servers. And if it gets a successful response, then it will tell me, hey, that all looks good. And then it will actually issue my certificates. And so in the meantime, 
on the client, I'm, co I'm cleaning up those text records after it says, hey, they're good to go, because uh, I, don't, I don't need those to sit there. It just wants to validate that I actually own this domain. And so it does that. Then I get my certificates on the client. So now I have my, um, I have my private key. And you can generate this private key every time you make um, a certificate request, or you can reuse. It's up to you, and it's, it's based upon what you want to configure your Let's Encrypt Shell script to do. But I get new private key, I get my certificate, and I get my chain. And now that I have those, I can use iControl REST to now have another relationship with my big IP. And I can take via iControl REST all of these things and deploy them out to big IP. And once they're, you know, in TMSH, it's a, you know, sys file. You create those um, out there in sys files. So, you know, step one is upload the files. Uh, step two is uh, map those, uh, you know, those files in your file directory uh, to sys file uh, SSL key and SSL cert. And then once those are mapped, then you can actually build your profile. So your you know, client SSL profile. And once that step is done, then boom, you can uh, you know, add to virtual or create virtual, and, and then you're done. And so, um, so that's the initial create phase. And then what, what you would do with this Let's Encrypt script is you would set that in cron and you can let it run every day and what the script will do is it'll check the date and if it's if it hasn't even been 30 days it won't try and and go out and do any more challenges because a let's encrypt certificate is is valid for 90 days and so within 90 days you need to you need to refresh your certificates now you can set in, in your logic, how often you want to refresh those. Some people wait 88 days. Some people like it to be more like 80 days so that if there are failures, they have time to troubleshoot them. But once you've set it up and once you have the relationship with your big IP working, it really is kind of like Ron Popeil's set it and forget it. And it just takes care of itself. And now all of your administrative overhead for managing certs is, is gone. And so this is, a, a, this is a viable solution for you to use. Again, I'm not going to say whether or not for your organization Let's Encrypt is something that you should trust, um, you know, any more than a DigiCert or a VeriSign. You know, that's up to your security policy to determine. But, uh, you know, it's a great solution and hopefully it'll be useful for you in, in your environments.